tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm. And welcome to Tinfoil Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to. Rock. Oh my God. God, dude, so, well, it's so <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, like, dude, you basically have one job here, and that is say rock. And dude, you, you gave me money. You gave me money for better internet, and it's not working, dude. You gave me a raise. And- <laughs> I'm a- How are you in Glendale, which is one of the nicest cities in the world, and you can't get internet? I don't know what to tell you, dude. Can you call your people? Glendale is one of the nicest cities in the world. I haven't heard that. Well, it's really. Have you been to Glendale? It's yeah. really nice. Okay. I mean, uh, what do you mean? Right. Okay. It's nice. I've just never oh, heard anybody call it one of the like the res- like you know you got Macau, Glendale. <laughs> yeah, dude, Glendale maybe not as like historic, but it's a clean, nice looking city. Yeah, okay, I mean that's a lot more reasonable than one of the nicest cities in the world. Well, Johnny, <laughs> listen, dude, how many cities are there in the world? 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 cities. So if you're top 500 cities, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You're still I don't know. I wonder, that's a good nice question city. actually. How many cities are there in the world that we know of? Well, you think there's some that just uh, 100 uh, 10,000 cities in the world. There you go. Yeah, so like five top five hundred, Glendale could be making a shot at that. It's possible. Okay, I'm voting for it. Thank you, thank you, (laughs) Uh, guys. Thanks for tuning in. A lot of wonderful things are going on, guys. We got some great shows. If you want to see myself, Eddie Bravo, and Xavier Guerrero live, we have we're doing three shows, three cities, three different states. That's how we're rocking. This Thursday night, we are going to be in Huntington Beach at the Rec Room. Then the next night, we're going to be at Kansas City, Missouri. And then, dude, the Savage Circus is rolling into town at Omaha, Nebraska at the waiting room. All those tickets are available at samtriplee.com. Or you can Google. I would either go to my website or the venue's website. If you go to other ticket websites, they're going to give you a ticket charge there and it's going to cost you more money. Keep it chill, bro. Keep it chill. So that's uh, that's that. Guys, the big 500, guess what? We've sold enough tickets that the city of Las Vegas at this moment has added a couple new tickets. So a couple more, like 20 more tickets. So grab your tickets now. It's, I mean, we're, we're close to a soul sellout and we're over a month away. So grab your tickets now. Come join us in a night of chaos. A lot of your favorite podcasters will be joining us there, both in the audience and on stage. You will see all the savages from the show are going to be there. Again, it's the big 500. There is a podcast followed by stand-up comedy. Then if you really want to support the show, we got some great stuff. Will you go to tinfoilhattshirts.com real quick? Tinfoilhattshirts.com. I think we added a new t-shirt. Let's see if it is there. It's supposed to be up. It is Afghanistan skydiving team. That is available. <laughs> uh, the a- Afghani tough. skydiving team. Is um, it up yet? Um, well, okay. No. We're going to be adding that there. Uh, just if you want to, we got some great shirts coming up. Afghanistan skydiving team. We got uh, Jack Yerlouche. That's coming. Uh, those are all up there. It's a great way to support the show. Tin full hat t shirts. Guys, even though, the, dude, we're almost sold out of the Abraxas the Chicken Snake God. I cannot believe that. I, I am so excited. I am so excited. If you want to see me, uh, you want to see what Johnny looks like, you want to see Xavier Guerrero's Instagram face on a snake, 
go check out a Brexit, the chicken snake God t-shirt. Cause when those t-shirts are sold out, they're gone. You won't ever see them sold again. I promise you on that. And then are you make uh, a t-shirt uh, limited edition. Which one? Uh, the new one of the Afghanistan is that limited edition or is that rocking forever? That's going to rock forever yeah, until that, people stop buying that it. Bill Gates quote is not what he's well, not what he said though. That they got that one wrong. It's, that be bad thing. Don't do that. That be bad. That do it's not, that. This says don't, don't do that. Do that, that be bad. That be bad. That's that's not the that's not the quote. Well, Johnny, thanks for that. You've now shit on a t-shirt. Thank you, Johnny. You get none of that t-shirt money. Just so okay, you know, I, I will forfeit my Bill Gates t-shirt money to point out that <laughs> that's the wrong quote. Uh, yeah. So that's great, guys. Uh, I'm proud to announce that I am fucking all full steam ahead into rockfin i love being on rockfin rockfin is killing it and guess what guess who just got added to rockfin today ryan bledsoe yeah oh cool bledsoe there. said so welcome bledsoe said so is going to be on rockfin we also have i just got a lot of your fam- favorite people uh brandon thomas the 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 the, the good looking farmer he's going to be on there um the guys who are uh, a bunch of people that have done the Tim Fowler premium, the um, false reality yeah, check guys are on there. And then all of my premium content there, five different shows, five different shows. Okay. Tim Fowler hat premium zero. Uh, we don't smoke the same as there. Uh, uh, Conspiracy Sam. social club. Uh, Broken Sim first look. And whenever Johnny actually sends me a link, whenever he actually sends me a stinking link, we'll do greatest of all time uh, sports talk. And yes. Johnny just won't do one. I mean, it's been three months, Johnny. Uh, the, the last one we had scheduled, you canceled, sir. So Johnny, all you got to do is send me a link and I'll do it. All of a sudden, uh-huh. and all of a sudden the Raiders win and Sam wants to do a greatest of all time. Yeah, that's true, dude. That's true. How excited were all your friends with the Raiders win, Xavier? They broke out of jail. It was a great. <laughs> Guys, I'm super excited for anything else, dude. Oh, yeah. If you want free shows, you want to listen to some free shows, I have a ton of them that are available. I have uh, Union of the Unwanted, which is a really great panel show that I do on conspiracies. We're all the best conspiracy. Oh, yeah. Union of the Unwanted's on there as well. So all the conspiracy theorists come to do one show that's on there. Conspiracy social club. You can listen to it for free. Older episodes. Check them out. Broken Sim, which is my stand up comedy show on uh, my stand, my comedy show, me and Johnny. It's for free. We don't smoke the same. Listen to it. It's for free. Okay. And what else do we got on there? That's for free. You're going to release your zeros all over again. Remember, yeah, you're going to I'm do gonna that. Be start pulling those audios and putting those out. So all that, give those lists for free. And if you like those shows, check out the newest episodes on Rockfin. All that $10, all of it. I mean, it, it really is the Netflix of, 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 of premium content. It would like, be the Netflix, it, it, except for the fact that they don't increase the price every fucking three months. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Rockfin. Yeah. It is, dude. Jimmy Dore. Look how many people listen to Jimmy Dore. F- almost 40,000 subscribers. So wow, that's not grow- a good way to use a, a megaphone, by the way. That's, I don't, I don't, someone needs to tell him that. that that's Johnny, just- is this the new Johnny where you point <laughs> out all the weirdness on stuff? He's screaming into a megaphone. And he yeah, that's a, he's right basically here. trying to say he's the only one listening to himself. Yeah, okay. 40,000 uh, people are listening to himself. Yeah, he's crushing it. He's yeah, crushing it. Go to We Don't Smoke the Same. Let's see what that looks like real quick. We Don't Smoke the Same. Let's see when the last time you put up some content, dude. We we don't. What did you just write there? Oh, that's how you do it? Let's see when you wrote the last. Oh, so a new one up, guys. New one up. Premium okay. content, some premium content on there. Congratulations, Xavier, Xavier Guerrero. Thousand followers never thought it happened. Look at that, dude! You have almost four thousand followers, dude. You you are winning all the wins. You are winning I'm all the, the wins. I'm coming after Justin Bieber. Hey, I love it, dude. You really are the Justin Bieber of Mexico, bro. <laughs> just, you really are, dude. Okay, so anything else, guys? Nope. See you guys. In new. Uh, check All right, out. We're super new excited. Broken Sam on YouTube coming up here soon. When is that coming out, bro? 5 a.m. 
5 a.m. All right, dude. 5 a.m., dude. 5 a.m. West Coast. And we're going to record one tonight, right? Yes, we are. Yeah. Going to be a good one. I got some great stories. Yeah, well, there's a lot that's happened. Yeah. I hope you guys are. I uh, hope you guys had a great week. I hope you guys enjoy the show. We're supposed to have Whitney, Co- Whitney coming, Whitney Webb on, and uh, she just moved somewhere that she can't get internet. So she's going to do the is internet. It Glendale? Is she in Glendale too? Yeah, that, she must the be nicest in Glendale. city in the world. She must be. <laughs> um, so uh, guess who steps in? The one and only Mr. Christopher Knowles. And man, this one's a great one, dude. You start going, what is this guy talking about? And then you see it. And then you're like, oh my God, it's all there. It's just deep stuff. Uh, So it's just, uh, all I got to say to you guys is three words, spiritual tranny hookers. Okay. (laughs) That's all I got to say. Enjoy Christopher Knowles. Hope to see you guys in Huntington Beach. Hope to see you guys in Kansas City, KFC, Kansas City, <laughs> and Omaha, Nebraska. Enjoy the show. Eat, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain. All right, let's get into this, man. What a glorious day it is. We were supposed to have Whitney Webb on, but she had to cancel, and I couldn't think of any better person to step in and knock it out of the park, our returning champion, one of my favorite people to talk to on the show. I could talk to him forever about anything but what we were going to talk about. That's usually how the show goes every episode. I'm so excited he's here because I've been honestly thinking about him uh, because I wanted to talk to him about a particular topic. Very excited to have our returning champion back. Please welcome Christopher Knowles. How are you, brother? I'm great. It's so great to be here, man. I'm always happy to be on your show. Always happy to talk to you. It's just so much fun. I, I've been uh, thinking about you, not sexually, just in generally. Okay. And <laughs> well, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? You know, I'm bored. Who knows? Who knows how far the mind wanders? Um, but I was thinking about you because I've been on this kick um, about, about Howard Stern a lot lately. <sighs> And what Howard Stern represents, because we've been seeing him doing a lot of this, you know, oh, man, fuck your freedoms. I want my freedoms back, blah, blah, blah. And I go, if you watch watch Howard Stern's career, it's like there's a lot of things that you would be like, that doesn't make any sense. And he's great at his job. But it brought me to like, I look at his logo. It's the Marxist fist. We all kind of let that go for a while. And then I remember you telling me about the dog serious, the dog star and what that represents. And are, are there, are there, are those things, are those two things combined? Do they combine? And is there something that kind of, we didn't see till we saw it? I, I think he's just a, a product of the machine. I actually knew his cousin. His cousin was a teacher of mine. And this is back in the 80s when I thought he was the greatest thing when he was on WNBC. And she said, he's a total phony. He's nothing like what you think he is. You know, she's met him on a number of occasions. I've seen him at family gatherings a number of occasions. He goes, he's just a doofball. He, you know, he's nothing. He's not a rebel, nothing like that. It's always just been an act. And he was never funny. I mean, this is the thing. I got to really hit this home because he had great people working for him. He had Jackie, the joke man who could just write a thousand punchlines an hour. You know what I'm saying? He had uh, Artie Lang. He had Billy West. He had great talent. And what happened is that he's not willing to pay people a fair wage. So nobody wants to work for him. Who's got any real talent. So he goes, well, I can't find real comics to work with me. So I'm just going to be a kiss ass and I'm going to kiss Ellen's ass and Jennifer Aniston's ass and Hillary Clinton's ass. And he just, he's just a product of the machine. I, I don't believe, I don't believe Sirius numbers. I think they're fake. I don't believe his salary. I think it's fake. I think the worth of that company is fake. It's, it's just all fake, just like the entire system is. And he's a fraud. He's a total fake who was, who built his career off the people that he's, excoriating and attacking now but he also built his career off the work of truly funny comics there was a time that would have really triggered me by the way but i i think you're right about the contract he got he was getting a hundred million dollars a year on a five-year deal in 2006 to go to Sirius. does anybody really believe that i don't i I think you're right about that man that's a great point johnny but i mean what what he represents you know i'm really into this cultural marxism now like i'm really into 
this kind of like destroying us from within. If you look at the things that the cultural Marxists want, we talk a lot about it on this show. De- you know, de- destroy the family unit, the nuclear family, uh, demonize the ethnic majority, uh, elevate the ethnic minorities, uh, elevate alternative lifestyles, start wars between uh, the genders. And you see it all happening in real time in Hollywood right now. And a lot of that, that kind of that push, which I fully engaged in at the time because, you know, I was a weirdo. You know, I, I was a sexual, I had sex addictions and all that stuff. So all that women stuff and all that naughtiness, so I just loved it because it, I could relate to it because, you know, I had, I have addictions, you know. But if you look at, like, how he was treated compared to, like, Opie and Anthony – who are doing like along the same thing, they got pounded constantly. And their ability to grow at the rate that Howard Stern grew was completely handicapped. And then they were kicked off when Howard Stern was allowed to keep going. And even when they both go to Sirius, they're gone. He's still there. And just what he ushered in, in terms of like, sexuality and stuff like that even though i'm open-minded like everybody just being themselves but the promotion of all this weird shit like hey man i want to fuck my sister like they would have people come on battling for who wanted to bang their sister more you know and i don't know how much of that was real and just people just wanting to get on howard stern to get on howard stern but the promotion of that stuff fits into like what does he represent like he went to i believe an ivy league college we understand that has a lot of indoctrination stuff. He went to the, I really got thought he went to BU. But did he go to BU? I he went to Boston. He did, yeah, he went to Boston. Okay, my apologies on that. But you know, so uh, my apologies on that. But still, it just like he everything he adds up to like this kind of push to this Carl this cultural Marxism that I fully engaged in. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like I enjoyed Howard Stern. I was on it twice. You know, but it's like does he? You know, being on Sirius the Dog star and like listening to all their programming now and you're like who's listening to half these shows hey everybody i want to tell you about our friends at urbanista they are urbanista wireless headphones okay urbanista was born in 2010 in stockholm sweden out of love for cities and urban life drawing inspiration from the world's great cities and rooted in scandinavian i said that close (laughs) design traditions our products are sleek stylish and sound great with most audio products out there they're always compromised either the sound look fit price isn't right something's off not with urbanista okay their stylish range of audio products that get the sound the look the feel and the fit just right okay their colorful assortment of life style audio products including active noise canceling headphones true wireless earphones wireless connected speakers don't compromise on either sound quality or style okay don't compromise and get all this for around half what you'd pay for the big name headphones okay designed for life in motion 365 day warranty on all products okay urbanista has a free and easy 90 day return policy so if you're not happy and we know you will be you won't have to worry about you can return exchange no questions asked okay they got the urbanista uh stockholm plus the london style okay so much amazing stuff all right so right now urbanista has a special offer for tin fall hat listeners okay go to urbanista.com slash Tim Foil, to get 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off everything. You'll have, you'll even get free shipping for all orders over $60. Let's go to urbanista.com slash Tim Foil for 20% off. That is U-R-B-A-N-I-S-T-A dot com slash T-I-N-F-O-I-L. Enjoy Urbanista. I know you will because we do too. That's I don't know. Who, I don't know who's listening to Sirius, to be honest with you. Um, we had a when we got a new car and we had like, you know, they give you like three months free and it, it's, it's just awful. It's just a loop. You know, it's just the same thing over and over again. 
I don't know who, I, like I said, I think it's, I don't know what it is, but I think it's a scam. I really do. I don't think any of the numbers are real. I don't think the money's real. As for Howard Stern, I don't think, you know, cultural Marxist, I mean, he was like, I, I don't know if I really put it in that context in, in the way he rose to fame and so on and so forth. But it's just, he's just going along with the program now. He's going along with what he's told to do See, this is why I don't believe that he has all that money either, because, you know, he's got what they, they used to call fuck you money. Right. And if he's got that kind of money, why why is he bending the knee like this? Which is, you know, he's a fraud. He's a phony. The whole system is fake. I mean, they're going to push whatever they're told to push. I mean, they give these people, you know, you get like you have to go to these conferences and listen to them say like what we're going to be doing in the coming years. And they give you these these books and these, you know, these PDFs, I mean, they give you all this material. And it's like, this is what you're going to say. This is how you're going to say it. It's all. Well, if you want to, if you want to lose all faith in Howard Stern, if you're listening, go Google this leaked staff meeting that he ran. Howard Stern, somebody recorded, uh, oh, you know, God, like, yeah, like yeah, against yeah. their contract, recorded a staff meeting of him trying to get celebrity guests and like just pushing everybody, email everybody, you know, con- we want celebrities on the show, you know, it's just, it's so gross that he sold. I mean, he sold it. If he didn't sell it, when he moved to Sirius, it's gone now. He has no soul. I can't say. believe there's a conference to sell out, right? You they they give you homework and shit. There's they a don't book call, you gotta they don't read. Call it, you know they don't call it that, but it's like it's like you know it's a like consult. They they use all these this terminology, you know. But you have to go through all these steps, or you go to these like sort of TED talk kind of conferences. But they're basically just you know, it's brainwashing. And it- you know, a guy like him who is part of the system and always he's always sold himself as like a rebel against the system that's just absolute nonsense he's always been part of the system he's always been embedded in the system and um you know like he was les moonbees guy and les moonbees was you know he was kicked out of cbs on on a me too beef so you know as far as the culture of this stuff i don't really take it seriously and and as far as the cultural marxism i mean one thing that I would have to quibble with is that that's a term that's sort of come to um, incorporate like postmodernism, but also what's that guy's name? The Russian KGB guy who gave that talk and he basically explained exactly what we're living through now in 1984. Right, 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 right. I know who you're talking about. I forget what his name is. Yeah, but it's like it was cause like active measures or something. So, I mean, I think it's just more like not so much cultural Marxism as like the original Frankfurt school, but it's more like destabilization from, you know, clearly the CCP. I don't, I I don't know how much, you know, whatever is the inherited group of the KGB is involved, but you know, it's just all these different groups, but also, you know, the global groups, you know, all the Soros people and Prince Charles's trust and, you know, World Economic Forum. I mean, all this stuff, all these groups. I mean, they all, they're all, they all have the same agenda now and they're all trying to roll it out. And, you know, the only thing I tell people is that like, yeah, I mean, the clamp down is coming, but this, none of this stuff is going to work because it's just all pipe dreams and they've been chasing pipe dreams their entire lives. And when the Couldn't rubber agree hits, more. Yeah, when the rubber hits the road, it's all going to collapse. I and totally are, agree. Yeah, I mean, we are really looking at, you know, and I keep telling people about this is like what I call cascading systemic collapse, because, you know, it's always been these people sort of on the, the, the fringes and the margins, like, you know, once we get our chance, you know, we're going to put this plan into effect and everything is going to be great. And they don't realize that these plans are all insane. And not only are they insane, and like we know they're evil and we know they're insane, but, you know, nobody ever stops to think that they're stupid. You know that these plans are stupid and they just don't make any sense. And um, I mean, we're going to see that. And I keep telling people like, you know, I I realize that, you know, it looks bad and it is bad. But don't stop looking at these people as like super beings or super geniuses. They're just they're not. They're just a bunch of evil guys with money. That's all they are. I have this theory, dude, that so much of the stories that we hear on on the news like oh my god these guys were in cuba and they were all hit with this like energy and all this stuff and i am somebody that does believe in direct energy weapons 
Uh, but I also think there's a lot of uh, exaggerated stories to keep the herd in line. The almost oh. like, again, shadows yep. in the cave to get us so worried about everything that, you know, this small group of people could crush us at a millisecond. Well, if you're doing all this stuff that we know is like decaying our country and all, why wouldn't you just do it? Like, why wouldn't you just drop the hammer on us and make us all, you know, uh, uh, linked up to the matrix slaves that you so want to obviously want to do? Like, why don't you just come out and do that? Why do you have to do this stuff slowly and sneakily, you know, sneakily? Is that even a word? But the point is like, wh why? And I just don't think they have the power that they think they do. And no matter how powerful they are, like somebody like Klaus Schwab, in my heart of hearts, he's still speck of dirt to the universe, to this giant universe that has rules. And those rules are love. And he's just, you, he's practicing. It's not even, the, I mean, it's not even that. It's just like, look at the world. I mean, just the world itself, you know? I mean, the, the systems, the natural systems that have existed, they, it's like they, they're on this hellbent quest to just like invert everything that is natural. And it's not going to work. I mean, natural law exists <laughs> because it works and that's the way everything works and you just can't go up against it. But, you know, you said something really interesting about like what it really is is that it's like we're constantly being psyched out. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, you know, I'll tell you a great example. Is all that Boston Dynamics crap, all that stupid robot doing parkour and, yeah. and the Watusi and stuff, 100% motion capture CGI. And I'll tell you something. I'll just lay the hammer down now. I'm telling you that's what it is. And if Boston Dynamics wants to sue me for that, let's go. Come, come right at me. That shit is phony as hell because if that that was real that company would not have this the very modest market cap that it has right now so i mean those those atlas robots that's a I, great I, point about that too. yeah i mean if they I've were that the, advanced they would be no. a giant giant corporation and the same thing with ai man it's like i don't know how many times i've had people write to me said listen i'm i'm a engineer you know or i write software or i do this it's just like you don't understand that ai all it is is algorithms. It's all, it's all it is is what we're seeing right now. And like the algorithms like incrementally get more intelligent because they're just processing more and more information that there's like an accumulation of, of intelligence there. But this whole idea of like AI is going to be like Westworld. It's absolute nonsense. The Matrix is absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. Skynet is absolute nonsense. None of this stuff is ever going to exist. You're never going to be like standing there and watch like a bunch of robots just kind of walking down the street like la 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 la, you know, because those things can't move, particularly those Boston Dynamic robots. They can't move without some guy like sitting there with like a, a remote control device. They're, they're basically toys. I mean, it's just absurd. And I'll tell you, it really bothers me because, and this is something that I've been kind of on the warpath about, is that I've been following science for since the 80s, you know, since I was a kid, you know, particularly the popular science press. And it's like most of it is just a lie, you know? I mean, I, since, listen, I'm older than you guys. Since the 70s, they were saying we were going to have a new moon mission. We're going to have bases on the moon. They were saying they were going to be bases on the moon in the late fifties. You know what I'm saying? And, and you see a guy like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, they've got all the money in the world, allegedly. Right. And all they do is just go, boop, boop. you know what I mean? It's just like, it's an amusement park ride. You know what I mean? It's like, they're not even <laughs> going close to low earth orbit. They're just, in, they're just like sort of in the lower end of the upper atmosphere. It's absurd. They can't, it's, you know, I have this saying, it's like, no one is going anywhere. No one is going anywhere. No one's going to the moon. No one's going to Mars. No one's going to anywhere because we're not meant to. We're not, our bodies are not built for that. And I just, you know, it's the lie. It's the lie of progressivism that's been, you know, in effect for over a hundred years. It's just like, well, you sacrifice this much to the state, you sacrifice this much of the system, because if we all pitch in and we all work together, we're gonna have moon bases and you're gonna have a robot body and you're gonna live forever inside a computer and all this kind of stuff. You know, we're gonna have like life extension and immortality. It's like, look at, look at Bill Gates, look at uh, 
Hillary Clinton. Look at George Soros. I'm look at Kissinger. They all look like a raisin. Shit. You know, like they look like a, a tuna sandwich that's been left out in the sun too long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's all lies. It's all nonsense. And I'll tell you, this is another thing that I keep saying, is that somebody who is really pushing this stuff when this stuff really started hitting the net with like the skeptics and the new atheists back in like late 2000s, early 2010s. That was all Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, his wherever his money was coming from, he was giving it to uh, you know Sam Harris. I don't know Sam Harris, but definitely Dawkins and Pinker and all these kind of people. You know, he was. This is the exact same thing I'm talking about. Where like part of the the, the conditioning process is going, you know, going out to Little St. James. You know, it's like oh, all the big stars are going to be there and everything like that. And you know, it's just like they bring you into the system, and it's just like once they get their hooks into you 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 march to their tune you know it's like one thing i say it's like yeah everybody kind of like wants to sell out in principle but the thing about selling out is that once you sell out they hold all the cards you know what i mean they hold all the cards and you hold nothing so when you ask me about howard stern howard stern sold out i mean he stole he sold out a long time ago because he realizes that the jig was up his act his act was getting stale his act was get i thought his act was getting stale like even like before Artie joined, you know what I'm saying? So his act was getting stale. It was, it was, he was running out his clock. I mean, that's just the natural flow of any celebrity or any performer's life, particularly at that level, that white hot level. So um, all, he, all he could do was sell out. And, you know, who even knows how much he sold out? Like, you know, Johnny was saying, this $100,000, $100 million, it's just absolute lie. There's, there's, there's no way that's serious without advertising and just all on subscription. It's like saying that, um, you know, I Chris, don't know. Would you, Chris, would you believe that Rogan got the money he got? No, no, because I think it's, I think it's stock options. I think it's all these kind of mechanisms and, you know, financial devices that sort of add up to that. But I don't think they just wrote him out a check for a hundred million dollars. I don't believe that, no. Yeah, you probably got stock options and all that. Yeah, stuff. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's but Which it's like skyrocketing. All right, I want to tell you about our friends at American Home Shield. That's right. For 50 years, American Home Shield has protected household budgets from the unexpected, like a dryer that won't dry or an AC that's lost its cool. In fact, they help cover the cost of repair and replace parts of over 20 home system appliances when they wear out. No matter how old they are, service fees, limitations, and exclusions apply. See plans for details, guys. It's real simple. Here's what's going on, all right? Right now to celebrate 50 years of providing home owner's peace of mind you could take fifty dollars off their most comprehensive plans ever go to ahs.com slash tinfoil okay tinfoil now and save fifty dollars off that's ahs.com slash tinfoil for fifty dollars off any plan service fees limitations and exclusions apply see plan for details I, you know, it's like my whole thing about like when people go off on crypto, I'm like, dude, apply it to fiat money and then apply it to the stock market. Everyone's like, well, we could see their, their numbers and their, I'm like, Kenya, Kenya. I mean, like the whole thing is a giant Ponzi scheme. The whole thing is a giant Ponzi scheme. All of the whole, it. The entire economy is. Like, no, no, 100%, <laughs> dude. And no, so I, much. Uh, it's, I, I, uh, Christopher, I think we live in a haunted house. That's what I think yes, we live that's in. A, that's good. I like that. I believe and they're it. just here to scare us. And when you turn it all off, it doesn't, it just loses all of its power. But the, the thing you got to do in this whole thing is just understand that people you love aren't going to see it sometimes. And you can't, you can't lose your mind trying to save them. Like they have, if they're, if they're not NPCs, right. You know, and there might be some NPCs in your family. I don't know, man. I haven't really dove in. Can, can one my person... family, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like me and my brother came from the same womb. We see the world different. And I love him with all my heart. And he's one of the smartest dudes I know. But we see the world totally different, man. You know, and like you can't save everybody. And I think slowly people will come around. I think I think the beauty of Biden is that he's so bad. It's oh. it's 
It's I, and it's I, like I, maybe it's purposeful to get you know us to you know to steal our louche. But man, it's so bad. It's so bad well, that I it's said, almost uh, beautiful. Yeah. I said that was the the best election ever because, you, you know, a guy like that who's so clearly not in control of his faculties at all. Um, and I'm wondering what kind of drugs they're giving him. Like, I'm always trying to think, like, are they giving him Tegretol? Are they giving him Adderall? I mean, what are they giving him just to make him lucid for, for the 20 minutes a day that he needs to be lucid to read off the teleprompter, right? And then as soon as he goes off the teleprompter, they shut it off. Um, but it's just like, no. I, I think that a lot of people, even like people like your brother, are just watching this, you know, and going, mm, something's wrong. You know what I mean? But, you know, one of the problems is, and this is a problem I have with a lot of younger kids, and, and I'm not even talking like kids in their teens or their 20s, like guys in their 30s who think, oh, you know, I'm just on the cusp of it. You know, it's like if I, if I play along and if I kiss Hollywood's ass, they're going to they're gonna sign me up. It's like, dude, they're never going to sign you up ever. It's never going to happen. You know, it's like they just string you along. So you, you know, you'll do whatever, you know, if whatever. If people really knew how much the odds are stocked against, stacked against them in Hollywood, I question whether they would ever really move out here. I mean, it's just rich kid after rich kid. At, you know, it's all trust fund children. And it's like, I always say this, people are like, oh, this group runs Hollywood, this group. You know what, dude? You know who runs Hollywood? Fucking private school kids. Private school kids run Hollywood. That Met Gala, that Met Gala did so much damage to Hollywood and politics after everybody saw these rich kids showing up with tax the rich, peg the patriarchy it's just and they're all they're all <clears throat> rallying against a system that their grandfathers and their fathers created which yeah. as soon as they see a little crack in their armor they will fully participate in and, and, and raping everybody out of their cash and, and, and their loose and that's just what's gonna happen well, and, I, but i think yeah. people are waking up to it well, you know, like everybody just do it like a search on Twitter on, on Hunger Games. And it's like everybody's just like, oh, my God, this is the Hunger Games because it is. But I'll tell you something else. I mean, I know a lot. of I turn a lot of people off when I start talking about this stuff. But it's just like when I looked at those people, like those people like on the red carpet and taking all these pictures, it's just like they look demon possessed to me, like dead eyed, soulless vessels, like no soul, just devoid of, of humanity and just possessed by demons. And I know, listen, when I start talking about this stuff, a lot of people just go, okay, I'm done with this guy. You know, whatever, you know. I'm Not just telling this you, show. I'm just I'm telling you the way I see it. I just looked at those people. But I did a I did a big post. I'll send you the link. So I did a big post on the when they did the one in two, 2018 and it was like the it was like a mocking the Catholic Church kind of deal. But the funny thing about it is that on the roof of the Met at the time is the statue that's on the Washington Mall now. And it's basically like this androgynous alien, alien demon. And the thing, it's called, we, the, the, the piece is called We Come in Peace. And I, I, forget the, uh, I forget the name, it's a sort of Pakistani artist, but it's just like, it's the ugliest, most demonic thing you've ever seen. And it's just like, when I saw those people like wearing all this kind of like, uh, you know, blasphemous kind and i'm not even a catholic but it's like wearing all this blaspheming catholicism kind of stuff and then you see the big giant demon on the roof with like the four heads it's just like i mean how much more obvious does it have to be you know i mean people have this like disbelief this kind of normality bias that i think is really not suitable in this day and age because no matter how bad you think it is it's going to be worse you know what i mean and you see this demon and it's like at the, I think it's at the Hirshhorn uh, Gallery on the Washington Mall, and uh, yeah, there oh it is. Oh my God! And that's on that was on the roof of the. Um, and everyone's like, "This is awesome!" And, like, and then, he, or then you see like this, the, you know, the 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 supplicant, the uh, you know the, the the groveling supplicant there, and it's just like. <sighs> How about the fact that everybody at this Met Gala had no mask on and everybody working it had to wear a mask? I mean, could you at all have a worse optics than that? 
rules no, for no, the opera. The optics is unbelievable. Terrible. And everybody noticed too. See, that's the see, this is the thing. It's like not a lot of people have really paid attention to the Met Gala until this year. I don't know what it was about this year that everybody just said, wait, what the what the fuck is this? But I'm glad they did because it's a really sick kind of weird thing. I, I remember there was one where Katy Perry showed up and this is when like i don't know she was like just came from a fresh rinse at fort dietrich or something and she's just <laughs> like ooh, ooh, ooh. she's just completely out of her friggin mind and uh uh i don't know man just i'll send you guys the link to the um to the piece because it's just you can't even believe it but it's just like i'm so f- far past the point of like i can't believe it because it's like whenever you say that something else is going to top it you know what i'm saying right just, we're, we're through so the rabbit we're through the we're th- yeah we're through the licking glass the t- and you'll see that here so with this stuff that you want to talk about so i wanted to talk about some of the stuff that you're talking about because you know there's a very famous um you know meme out there and it shows a computer chip right the inside of a computer chip and then it shows like i think it's like san francisco or new york city from a top and it looks so much alike Mm -hmm. the design of the city looks so much like a computer chip and which is saying you know we live in the matrix we're just enter we're just batteries like there's so much implications from that right so one thing i know you wanted to talk about is about bacon basically uh how how buildings are designed architecture and, and and the hidden meaning behind these architecture and what, and what, if you understand and know what to look for, you'll see it. Like, so where do you want to start? Well, so this is the, um, the ground zero star map. And this is something that ties into something that I've been doing the, for the past year that I've been looking at Masonic tracing boards and Masonic iconography. And it's just suddenly real, you know, I do a lot of work with like studying this, the, um, the stars and stuff. Oh, there it is. God, jeez. Oh. But um, so <laughs> I, I just realized that the um, Masonic tracing boards are all uh, star worship. And it all has to do, the, the basic theme is um, like storming the gates of heaven. And it's kind of like the whole idea of like, being cast out of heaven and then retaking it, if you kind of follow that line of thinking. So the Ground Zero Star Map was just basically looking at um, the fact that uh, at the Stargate, where where the the Zodiac meets um, what's called the Celestial Plane, which is the Milky Way. And this is on the fourth page right here. I mean, just look at what is guarding the Stargate. Right there, see Gemini, and then the Pentagon. Oh, snaps. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So you got the twins and the Pentagon. And they're guarding the, um, you know, this takes you up to Cepheus. And Cepheus is the garden, which is the Garden of Eden, right? And this is something that I've also been doing a lot of work on, is looking at a lot of like, um, stellar symbolism in the Bible as well. So it's like this is where... So Orion, right, is Hiram Abiff, okay? And the wounds of Hiram Abiff on the, uh, what is it, the head, neck, and chest, those are the three stars, uh, Betelgeuse and the other two there. And Orion is also the headless one, so that's the headless rite that Crowley also performed. But the, the belt of Orion points to Sirius, and you were asking me about Sirius, right? So Sirius is one of the brightest stars in the night sky, so it's always been venerated because it, it also rose with the inundation of the floods at the Nile. So the stairway to Sirius, which is the first degree Masonic tracing board, which is the symbolism of the first degree Masonic tracing board, when you become an entered apprentice or a scentless apprentice, as I like to say, um, is basically symbolizes the three stars of, of Orion's belt pointing you to Sirius. And this is something that they teach kids. You know, it's like, do you want to find the star Sirius? Just look for Orion's belt and then follow its south. Uh, Southwest to Sirius. So this is the the symbolism in the first degree uh, tracing board, the Masonic tracing board. So I was thinking, all right, well, that's pretty obvious. But the thing that I started to notice, because I used to 
commute in and out of New York all the time is that there's what's called the World Financial Center. And this is like, these are the buildings at ground zero that nobody ever talks about. But the thing that I realized is that that's also the stairway to Sirius because you have four towers, right? And one's a step pyramid and one is a truncated pyramid, which makes it five-sided. And then there's a dome and then there's a, a you know, regular pyramid, regular um, conventional pyramid, and that creates a pyramidion. So if you look at the glyph for Sirius and you're asking me about Sirius, again, we can also talk about the 33 encoded into Sirius XM, right? But XM is also 1013, just so we know, which is the, the Templars. <laughs> it's like the, the depth of the symbolism gets to be really uh, obsessive here. But um, so the World Financial Center, which nobody even really noticed until the, the trade towers came down, is basically the Sismasonic stairway to Sirius, which is basically following the belt of Orion to Sirius. And there's a lot of lore, like in ancient Egyptian religion, but also in like occult groups like the uh, Order of the Solar Temple, who were involved in a lot of uh, mass suicides back in the 90s. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I mean, they believed that they would, you know, they would shed their vehicles, shed their bodies and ascend to the star Sirius. Because this is a part of teaching going back to Blavatsky and the Theosophists that, you know, that humanity, the, the soul of humanity originates in Sirius. So next to the Twin Towers, Gemini, is Johnny, can you take this off? Can I so I could because I think uh, are you still using this map? No, um, the, okay, but the, but if you look at the next page, that's where you see uh, Hiram Biff, but also so Ariga, right? The next page, so okay, so here we are. So, um, Boaz and Jack, and which is the you know the columns at the gate of Solomon's temple is, is obviously Gemini, right. And then the house of David or Solomon's temple is um, Origa, but Origa is also the good shepherd. It's, it's a chariot and it's a good shepherd, but Capella is, represents Solomon. And then Hiram of Biff is, like I said, it's, it's Orion. So all the symbolism, it's all stellar. I don't understand like why it's important to them, but I just see it over and over and over again and, and well, actually, you know they say that that like millionaires study the market billionaires study the stars exactly so but if you go down a bit i'll just show you where i really first started noticing and this is on page eight of the um page eight we're right here so this is when i realized you know <laughs> what a fix the political system was because you had these uh, quote unquote, two opposing sides, McCain and Obama. But if you look at their campaign logos, it's basically the stairway to Sirius. So basically what you have here is that the, um, the uh, Pyramidion and the pentagram were incorporated into McCain's logo. And it's also the blue and gold, you know, the Masonic colors of the blue and gold. Oh and then the God. dome, the dome, which represents the womb, the womb of Isis um, and the three steps, and that's Orion's belt, the three stripes and the flag leading to the rising sun is, um, you know, it's Orion's belt pointing to the womb. But this is also something that's encoded, you know, I mean, Graham Hancock has talked, and Robert Ball have talked about how this is encoded into the, um, the Great Pyramid, that they had these shafts pointing at Orion and also at um, Sirius. At least on the uh, the uh, western side. Unbelievable how like thought out this is. I mean, and people don't realize it. Like everything's done. So when you see these in movies, right? It's just like every little bit in these movies. If you even think of like Stanley Kubrick movies, like every detail is like completely and utterly thought. We're going to get to Stanley the... Kubrick movies in just a second. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. but it's just like the amount of detail in these things and they come off as so innocent. And then you just, you have somebody like yourself break them down. You're like, Jesus, it's all there. And in my heart of hearts, I believe John McCain was pushed forward so that Obama would have a walk-in, a real easy walk-in to get elected. Cause we were just coming off the Bushes and Cheneys. And the last thing we wanted was an old, crusty white guy again. So you Wait, have this yeah. good-looking well, black I, guy. I, I, I'll say, Sam, I think you're right, but I think maybe he didn't know that. And then maybe he started to have a little more success than anybody anticipated. 
And then they insert this bomb into his campaign called Sarah Palin that just completely blows that. I mean, the, I, he didn't want it. When have you ever heard that, that a, a presidential candidate didn't want their VP to be the person that it was? I've never heard of that. And the party just was like, oh, uh, no, you, we, the, the people really like Sarah Palin. Here you yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she got a huge lift. And then just boom. Yeah, she cratered. <clears throat> so, John, if you go down to page 11. All right. Um, this sort of gives you the, the overview. OK, right here. All right. So, like I said, you know, this is the, the those beams of light. And that's another whole discussion, the heavenly beams. Um, that's a symbolism like we see at the Luxor pyramid in, oh, in yeah. Las Vegas and so on. Um, that's a whole other discussion. So, but basically we see the, um, and this is the Stargate, which is where um, the Zodiac or the ecliptic meets the celestial plane or the Milky Way. Okay. And that takes you up to heaven. That takes you up to Cepheus. So here we have um, the twin towers. <clears throat> we have Sirius encoded into the um, world financial center. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have the belt of Orion as all, you know, the forward building of the, um, World Financial Center, but we also, yeah, we also have um, the River Po or Aradnus, which is another important constellation in this, which is the Hudson. So it all it all aligns, and and also we get when we get to like talking about Taurus and such. I mean, if if the alignments weren't just like so one to one, you'd, you'd almost be tempted to think like this is almost like pareidolia or something. I'm just seeing something that isn't there, but it, we just see the same alignments repeat over and over again in sequence. You understand what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just like once you see the sequences and the correspondences that kind of puts to rest any kind of like, Oh, this is just like, whatever, you know, this is just it, random. Yeah. It's, it's not random. It's definitely not random. Oh um, man. I totally get what you're saying here. Like, those constellations look like the top of these buildings. And why are those buildings exactly like that? How are they designed to have that kind of top that is like, you know, looks like a top of a pyramid, which fits into each of those constellations pretty nicely. And literally the twins, literally the twins, which are the twin towers. There's a lot of talk about what they represent, both a cult, you know, like the twin towers represent the, a lot of occult symbolism as well. Yeah. Um, do you want to go down a bit, Johnny? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, oh, oh, no, uh, page 14. So we, we, you, you'd mentioned Stanley Kubrick, so I wanted to bring this up. So um, when the Twin Towers came down, all of a sudden we see the Winter Gardens of the World Financial Center aligned with the Millennium Hotel. And the Millennium Hotel, and you can go online and, and look this up. I mean, it was consciously based on the monolith from 2001. Yeah. Somebody was just talking about that 100%. That is from the movie 2001. So, so we see this alignment in the Royal Arch. The Royal Arch is the Milky Way. You know, uh, you see this in the sky and stuff and see this in photographs. So the Royal Arch is the Milky Way, which takes you up to the northernmost constellation, which is Cepheus. And the interesting thing, too, is when, when you look at the Bible and stuff, Cepheus and, and Draco, which is the dragon or the serpent, are sort of like battling it out at the North Pole. I mean, the, the, the pole star is, is Polaris. But, you know, you just when you look at the northern sky, you'll see that uh, quite clearly. Um, so just can we go down a page here? So, so are you somebody who believes in um, that a lot of the stories, biblical stories, are based off the constellations? I, I, I kind of think it's the other way around, because, like, what are the constellations? You know what I'm saying? I mean, the constellations is just dots in the sky. You know what I mean? Like, why would you look at like three dots and say, "Oh, that's a chicken," or you know, what I mean? <laughs> whatever? It's just like we assign meaning to these to these constellations, you know, these patterns. It's just like, so there's this whole field of, of inquiry called astrotheology. And there's, um, there's a woman passed away, and I was actually friendly with this woman named Acharya As, and she wrote this book, The Sons of God, and a couple of other books. But her thing was just, you know, Jesus is just the son and all, on and on and on. And it's just like, when I start talking about this stuff, people will just say, you know, you're just doing astrotheology. And it's like, no, I'm really not. Because, you know, first of all, I have a lot of issues with astrotheology, I think it's kind of lazy, but also 
like I said, I mean, like the, we know about the sun rising and, and its positions in the sky and everything like that. And that's sort of like, we take that for granted because that's a fact of life. But when we look up at the stars and we just see some random dots and we just say it's Orion or we say it's Gemini, it's like, why do we even say that? Like, why would it, you know, particularly back in the old days when you could see every damn star in the sky, like you couldn't believe, like, why would we just pick out like this star and this star and this star and just say, it's like, you know, it, it's a constellation. It's, 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 it's I'm amazing to me that they even were able to come up with these things. I mean, nowadays, because of light pollution, we can look up in the sky and say, oh, okay, well, there's Orion because those stars are brighter than all the millions of other stars that are around them. So, but I, I don't think that. I think it's, I think it's the opposite. I think that we named these constellations, we gave these constellations these certain meanings because of our stories, you know, uh, because whether it's because of mythology so or religion. So it's your belief that the stories... Stories came first, yeah. And, and then they were, you know... Um, put into the stars you know it's like they were sort of placed in there you know for safekeeping i guess you would say but um if we go down to um uh so the next page is 15 all right so when you go inside the um the, this is the inside of the, the second picture here is the inside of the world financial center the winter gardens and of course you see the the rising sun against the royal arch and then the the, the causeway there is lined with um these palm trees of the genus Phoenix, you know what I'm saying? So Phoenix is actually, you know, it's a mythical bird, but it's also a um, genus of palm trees. So this is all like really heavy rebirth symbolism here. Do you, do you understand Jesus. what I'm saying? So we have all this really heavy rebirth symbolism aligned with the monolith. Okay. And what I see this, and actually, if we can just go up a little bit to... Uh, Let me ask you something. Does, uh, does the rising arch equal, like, the dome? Well, actually, uh, Johnny, if we go up, like, go start up, like, page 11 and, and start scrolling down. Uh, okay, so, all right, so page 12 here. Uh, page 12. So that's the arch. That's the royal arch right there. And there's the rising sun. Or that might even be the setting sun. I'm, I'm not sure which direction it's at, but that's the Royal Arch there. And that's, those are all the constellations that are really important in all these systems, you know, Freemasonry and, and all these other belief systems. That's the really important ones because that goes up to Cepheus, which is, again, the gardener, the Garden of Eden. But it's also uh, Cassiopeia, Perseus. You know, I, we talked about Medusa and this just this past week, a couple of Medusa videos came out, you know, algal and all that kind of stuff that we were talking about. Um, that Chloe, or is it Chloe, Barry, or one of those twins. Um, but also Rihanna did this whole dress up as Medusa and stuff. So the Medusa symbolism is coming back in a big way. And it seems to me that there's some sort of ritual connotation. I'm not exactly sure what it is. But so if you go down to page 13, Johnny, so here we see, this is like, this what is what I interpret as that same symbolism that we see with the alignment of the winter gardens at the World Financial Center and the monolith. So the altar in the book, and that's the book of life, um, that's the same thing. You know, that's, that represents celestial wisdom, heavenly wisdom, heavenly knowledge, and all this kind of thing, which is the same thing that we see with the monolith, right? But there's also, there's, uh, Boaz and Jack in, which is Gemini guarding the arch, you know, the arch where you go up to the garden and the garden is the G. I, I, I really believe that the garden is the G. Everybody goes, does it mean God? Does it mean geometry? I think it means the garden because um, I see the square and compasses as uh, Cassio Cassiopeia. And if you look at Cassiopeia, um, it's kind of a W-shaped constellation, but you can superimpose the... Um, the square and compass of Masonic iconography on that. And the G is like, that's how you can see the garden. You can see Cepheus from Cassiopeia. Because and that, I, G is also Freemason, right? That, well, that's what I'm saying. I, I believe that the Masons, I mean, I, I think a lot of Masons don't even understand their own symbolism. But I think that the G is, is the garden, gardener. 
Cepheus. Hey, do any of these arcs have to do with the firmament? Well, I mean, I think that's kind of what it is. You know, that's how it's seen as. It's seen as the firmament, right? You know, and um, the dome, right? Right. This is how it was all seen. So I think that the, the fact that you can see this, you see the Milky Way form an arch is where the belief in the celestial dome comes from. But I mean, the celestial dome is also in science because the... Van Allen belt? Well, no, but the constellations themselves are kind of seen as a globe around, you know, the firmament. Um, but if we just go down to page 16, now this is real interesting. This is, I, I, I can never get over this, but um, the top is, this is like ground zero circle, like maybe 2005 or so, maybe before ground was broken on the, the trade center. But he, at the left-hand corner of that upper picture, that's the monolith, that's the millennium. And then, you know, right across this, pit is where you see Sirius. And if you look at the, um, it's almost like reversed in the still from 2001, where, you know, we see the, the pit and the monolith. And you know, so the astronauts- Oh, I see what you're them. saying. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. So is that yeah. where 9-11 supposedly went down? Is uh -huh. that- Yeah, is that's, that... Yeah, yeah, that's ground zero. That's ground zero, wow. Yeah, so that's Ground Zero. That's the the Millennium Hotel, the Monolith, and that's the stairway to Sirius right across. So if you go back and watch um, 2001, you're going to see a lot of alignments. You know, the planets and the stars and so on, and the moon and the sun aligning. Wow, dude! Even the, all the like the uh, on the side of the walls, that weird design. You can somewhat you can see it on the walls here, man. It, exactly. Yeah, the scaffolding. Yeah. That is crazy, man. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, do you want to go down, Johnny? Johnny loves going down. <laughs> so the bull, so, I mean, so this, this is, again, this is just more confirmation of the alignments because we have the, um, the Twin Towers, uh, Sirius, Orion's Belt, the, and, and the bull, which is lower, right? So the, the bull aligns with Taurus. And then the, there again is Radness. So I, I don't think that the placement of any of these buildings was, was accidental. And, you know, if you were just looking at just the architecture, I, I, I don't think there's any possibility that these alignments, you know, I'm not talking about 9-11 itself or whatever. I'm just talking about the buildings, the construction of the buildings. I just don't think there's any way that this could be um, uh, anything but intentional. It just, it all makes me think that everything is assimilation. That's, I just, it all makes me think so much of this is binary code, ones and zeros, and that they're working from this. I really do believe that part of, of you know, why gambling books are so accurate and so often they are wrong. And I think, and I'll get into why they, they have to be wrong, but like the way they just nail these numbers, it just these spreads on these games just makes me think they're dealing with numerology and, and, and binary code. And well, I, I, I'll say, Sam, I, I can hear the fans out there saying it's all fixed. That, that's all our comments. Anytime we talk about sports, they're fixed. Everything's fixed. But sometimes just it's so it just. Is it fixed or did they, it was, is it in the star? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't forget they, your mantra. Your mantra. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All that makes me believe in, 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 uh, in that it's all, um, uh, assimilation. And, and the reason you occasionally have the book off is because they have to let you win occasionally to keep you hooked. If you're always losing, you're eventually going to stop doing it. That's my theory. On those, are, those are Vegas rules, right there, right? Right. I mean, they have to let you win. So that's that's the whole theory about this podcast. If we were more wrong than we were right, why would we continue doing it? Yeah, I know, well, but isn't the line is meant to get just as much action on one side as on the other side? So everybody's always winning half the time. That's the whole point, right? I mean, in the line. 
not the lottery. The lottery is that one where they give you uh, so much money where you're willing to risk it all. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I we're mean, talking, we're talking about sports. We're talking, yeah, you we're have a greater greater chance of being eaten by a shark than winning the Powerball. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. Yeah, and, but, but it's like Vegas, these books, if they were winning half the time, Johnny, they wouldn't be doing it. Like well, they have to win more than they're losing to keep it going. It's that occasional person that hits big that everybody hears about that keeps everybody believing they can win the lottery. You think it's the same thing in fantasy football, like DraftKings? Uh, no, because that's statistics, you know. But I think, like, lines, like, when you're like, dude, the line was three and a half, and they won by four. You're like, yeah, but they, they, Vegas makes their money on commissions, though, on, on, like, losing bets. See, but this just ties back to what I was talking about before, is that, like, we've had all these computers working for – years and years and years like data mining and stuff so say you're on facebook right like how much more are they going to know about you next year than they do this year like why do they need to keep scraping all this data and and where is it going like who who is gonna have any value in this you know what could you buy like toilet paper every other month instead of every month it's just like the insanity of it but i mean the thing that what i really believe is that like it's almost like they want to get all the data of everything and just like hack the codes of everything. It's like hack the codes of creation, you know? And this is what I'm talking about, like storming the gates of heaven. It's the same metaphor, you know? It's like man wants to become God. It's like when you are as powerful, I don't know, just like, just say Bill Gates, for instance, when you have, you've done all this and you have all the money, it's like, what next is, what, you know, what can you do next? It's like you want to be a god. You want your apotheosis. You know what I mean? And this is like the recipe for disaster throughout human history is this need to transcend humanity and become godlike. And I think okay. that is the real, you know, when you have like these banks, these giant banks of cray com supercomputers out in the Utah desert just constantly running all these data and all this information and stuff. It's like I think they're really after something bigger than just the obvious, which is like the surveillance state and all this other kind of stuff. It's like these people are insane. You know what I mean? But, but just look like look at somebody like an Elon Musk, right? It's like he's so full of bullshit, right? But I think he's he doesn't know anymore what's the bullshit and what's reality. Because he, you know, it's like you get high in your own supply. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like he might really believe that he's going to be sending rockets to the moon or to Mars, right? Hey, but Chris, it's, it's never going to happen. They claim, but, they claim they mine so much data that they can predict if you're going to be a serial killer or you're going to be a criminal. That's where they're at. And that's what they want to be able to predict. They're like, I want to be able to mine so much where I can tell, well, Chris is going to be a serial killer. He's going to go on a rampage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But, it, but it's bigger than that, though. It's not just like, that's what I'm saying. It's bigger than this. That's, you're talking about the surveillance state and like kind of like this minority report dream that they have. And, and that's totally part of it. But it's also bigger than that. It's, and if, you, if we w could go down to page 25, Johnny, I'll show you w how much bigger it gets. Okay, so here's the, the Pentagon, right? And this is, this is the um, Auriga. This is the Chariots of Fire. But it's, also, it's interesting because it's also the Good Shepherd, but it's also the Chariots of Fire, right? So this is what takes you up the Milky Way to Cepheus, back to the garden. So this is a very important... Holy shit! So, so you see the, the correspondences here with the, the, whatever the attack was... Oh, my God. It aligns with the, these stars here that break the shape of the pyramid. So these stars break the shape of the pyramid, right? I mean, the Pentagon, right? And they're called the kids, which means, the, you know, it's the little goats, right? And look at how they it correspond exactly with the, um, the damage to the, the Pentagon right there. That is unbelievable. That is truly unbelievable. And it again, it goes back, simulation, you know, and all this stuff. And, you know, it's like, yeah, they're data mining. Yeah, you know, it's like Xavier did clear, right? 
and they knew his sister's age or he thought they knew his sister. Like, what a great way to get you to tell them your sister's age. Like, hey, dude, if you get this wrong, you can't do it. You're like, oh, it's, it's uh, she's 22 years old. You know, it's like, oh, she's 22 years old. Now we know. It's like, there's this all this fear. For me, ma'am, all of this is about uh, just stealing loose, dude. And just, and just so much is like, oh man, we want like at some point they're getting so much data. Are they getting data on uh, data of, of data? Right. I mean, is it, it's like my whole can thing I, with analytics. I, well, here's the thing. And I say this a lot, you know, in interviews and stuff, it's like sorcery runs the world. The goals yes. are, are sorcerous. Okay, and that's why we're constantly seeing these rituals, these mass public rituals, you know, for instance, every year, the Super Bowl halftime and everybody's like, oh, my God, look at this, look at this. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's a public ritual. It's just like the ancient days of Rome, because sorcery is, is what really makes the world go around and all the technology and all the data mining and all the rest of it. It's just plumbing. You know what I mean? It's just like so you've got like this great set of plumbing. Right. But sorcery is the water. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? So for them, sorcery is the water. Sorcery is the water. You know, it's what makes the technology work in so far as that their goals and their aims and their methods are sorcerous. And if this sounds a little extreme to some people, and maybe not to your listeners, right? But it's just like, just go back and read how sorcery was performed like how it really works and this is why i'm really nervous like when guys like rogan are talking about dmt and stuff because i'm just like yeah dmt is kind of like the gateway you know it's kind of like the expressway to like realms that we really don't want to be messing around with you know and i've had people like in my groups and stuff talk about like oh i did dmt and 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 all this kind of stuff and it's just like I mean, I had people who had really bad freakouts on it. And it's just like, I, I think that DMT, or at least in that form, and all what I call MK Ultra 3.0, which is all this quote unquote hallucinogen research, you know, for psych depression and all this kind of stuff. It's to me, it's all about entity possession. Okay. It, it well, we talk about all that all the time on the show. It's like drugs, alcohol. I really, in my heart, hearts believe crystal meth and fem amphetamines has occult magic in it Absolutely. and you just just Absolutely. see people they get hooked on this stuff and they're talking to demons man and it sounds so nuts it sounds so nuts but it's like man, i used to I, think it would listen i used to think this shit was all nuts i believe me if, you know go back and like listen to things i did 10 years ago i'd be like oh this is crazy but it's just like you just see it now all the time you just see these people on tiktok you see all this like antifa shit and you know people uh, just they they're not normal people anymore and they're not even like mentally ill anymore it's it's levels above mental illness cuz we've seen mental illness all the time we've never seen this kind of people becoming other people but let me tell you something about this is that with mk ultra one of the things they were talking about they said the goal was was to erase the personality and replace it with another personality and this is what you and Cameron said when he was doing the depatterning up in, in Montreal. So that's just like scientific, not even scientific, but that's just sort of like putting a little spin on demonic possession, taking the personality, erasing the personality, replacing it with another personality. That's entity possession, no matter how you cut it. Um, and believe me, I was the biggest skeptic about this stuff for years, but you just get worn down. And I you think, know a lot, you know, the, the meth had a huge huge part in this I and mean, look at all those when you see all those antifa mug shots they're, they're all meth heads all of them yeah they all have like the the, the act you know all that those weird all the picking their shit. fucking skin and stuff like that yeah but they get all those blisters around their mouth and their face and stuff from from smoking it and everything do you guys know do you guys know what uh religion the cartel uh prays to uh santa santa <laughs> And that's that's who they pray to. So you don't think they're praying? Oh, Santa Muerte. Yeah. yeah. They're praying you get addicted to drug and not come back. That's literally what they pray to every night. It's supposed to be the Virgin Mary, but the the death one. And they literally, they every time they capture any any stash houses, there's always this Virgin and getting prayed or something. And so I mean, 
That's so fired. crazy to me, dude. It's so crazy to me. I mean, like, just all these people dying from fentanyl. It's like, it is like, there's so much going on right now that is anti-business. There's business being yeah. ran in an anti-business mode, right? Like, kill, like dr- drug cartels killing off their clientele. That makes no, no sense. sense to me. You know, Jimmy Kimmel going, the unvaccinated should be not allowed in hospitals. Like, how does that endear you to your clientele? How does that... Uh, the people that are consuming your content, how do you endear them to that they like you and and want to consume? It doesn't. And it's, it's evil. Just- it's evil. I mean, it's it, evil is everywhere. I mean, it really is. I mean, like elemental evil. And Jimmy Kimmel, I mean, he's just he's another guy. He's another Howard Stern guy. I mean, he just used to be, oh, I'm a rebel and all this kind of stuff. And I'm a crazy guy. Me and Adam Carolla are doing all this wacky stuff and everything. And just they get you bit by bit. They, you know, it's just like, and, and they get they get you when like you're you're starting you're on the downslope. They get you when you know things are starting to get a little soft. You know what I mean? When things are starting to go a little south on you. That's how they, they get you. They did that to every rapper. Every rapper that was uh, dying yeah. out, like every rapper, every rock musician that was dying out, they're like, here, clear COVID, and we'll put you back on uh, uh, back on the light. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, like Rage Against the that. Machine. Rage Against the Machine are talking about that. It's just like, I wait, well, what? I, even, I just yesterday, I sent you, uh, Sam, that excerpt from Dave Grohl's Rolling Stone interview where he talks about how he did a, a ceremony basically to sell his soul so that he could have success. And now he's thinking as an adult, like, dude, dude, did I lose my soul? Like, he, I mean, that, that was just yesterday. Dave Grohl was talking about that. Uh, Madonna know. talked about it all the time, too, about how she's realized she can't buy your soul back you don't get it back and dave Grohl, man you know there's all that blood sacrifice stuff going on with uh you know kurt cobain and stuff like that and how big he got it's it's very interesting that the guy was like the third dude that nobody talked about in in, um in that band suddenly in nirvana is suddenly the guy who's like in the biggest band in the world i mean that courtney love i mean (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she, she, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, yeah, I mean, but, no, don't but, get me started on that. You know, uh, I mean, she, she, milked him. She, bleach. She, she milked him dry. Let's take a look at sports, right? Uh, exactly what you were talking about on the downslope. We have, we have, Col- we have, uh, Col- uh, Ker- uh, what's his Kaepernick. name? The quarterback Kaepernick. Yeah. We yep. have Bubba Wallace or Watson, whatever his name is. And then Jeremy Lynn. All of them started like civil rights movements oh. for their group. Okay. While they like people were comparing tweets that Colin Kaepernick did before he was benched and after he's benched. Okay. Jeremy Lynn was like Lynn sanity. And then he had to go back to summer league to try to make it in the D league. And now all of a sudden he's talking about, people doing Asian stuff, which kicks off all this Asian hate, which starts this fighting and all these opportunists walking in, all these Asian comics talking about how hard they have it. I know them. They've been famous for decades, just jumping on that. And it's just like, it's just like, it's always on the way down. And it's like this relevance. And then they slowly fade away again because it just doesn't, it's, it's, that's what happens when you sell your soul, man. Yeah, they hold all the cards. Johnny, could you go down to 26? Because I, I want to um, sort of show, like, so, okay. <clears throat> so this is what replaced um, the Twin Towers at Ground Zero, right? So we have the Oculus, which is this flying bird, which is the entrance to the path station, which is next to um, One World Tower, you know, One is World Tower. disturbing Trade to you guys? That just That's a disturbing build. That disturbed the image of that is... is- what which one the oculus I, that's that is not a that's not pleasant for me to look at i don't know well I'll, I'll, if we yeah i mean if you go down so just so let's just establish and then we see the stairway to sirius right next to that um if we go down one one page okay so this is what i'm talking about this is cepheus and this is where the design for church steeples comes from oh my god there it is yeah and if we see you know we see you know i just 
the just follow the arrows you know the pyramidion shape and then the base the the rectangular or square base it's the same symbolism it's basically that, and then so, we we're talking about how that looks so much like a a, a, a needle you get the vaccine from <laughs> well there you go right but yeah so it's uh, you, you can clearly see Cepheus there and if you go down one more Okay, so so this is the part of the sky. Um, so we see Cepheus, which is you know, which you saw before, which is one world tower, and then we see the base of the uh, North Tower. No, I'm sorry, the South Tower, and that's Pegasus, which is the square, right? And then you're talking about that bird, that's Cygnus, which is the swan, the flying swan. And uh, I don't know if you guys heard about Holy this. Holy shit! Yeah. So the so this is this is the new Ground Zero now. So the Ground Zero before, like what we said, was the gate of so heaven. you're saying signus is is the oculus yes yeah oh my god it, it is a bird dude yeah and, and if you heard like there was an operation signus that the british government were doing like that was their um pandemic war gaming back in like 2018 i think it was and there was a big you know oh my just uh, Cygnus, Cygnus has just been everywhere, you know, and this was some weird stuff like somebody was killing and beheading like the, the swans, Cygnus is the swan, by the way, um, the swans in um, a park in London and somebody had poisoned Queen Elizabeth's swans. I mean, it was just all this kind of like these weird swan stories that all had like a very heavy kind of blood sacrifice ritualistic oh my God, tone to them back dude. in like 2017, 2018. And then we have... Uh, and, and again, here, I mean, the, the correspondences, again, you know, are, um, are unmistakable. Uh, and, and just dude, go one more, by the way, uh, Johnny. And, go ahead. and as you do that, what about the fact that from an aerial view where the two towers were are now look like two black cubes? Well, exactly. And one of those is, is Pegasus. Because look here, um, this is the National September 11th Museum. And, and the alignment is a bit off because it's you couldn't really align that closely but it, you clearly see that there's the the square of pegasus which is the the base that basin which is i guess is like a wow a reflecting pool or something and then the the uh, memorial museum is the exact shape of um, pegasus legs so i mean the alignments there are just you know i i'm not going to speculate on on like who or why or whatever, but it's just like the, the, the symbolism of the alignments and the architectures is, is really clear. So the, the, the gate, the gates, Boaz and Jackin, right, came down on 9-11, which is the Coptic New Year, but it was also in the Coptic calendar. It was 1717, and 1717 was the year that um, Freemasonry became official. Uh, it was uh, June 24th, 1717. Um, you know, so there's just all this kind of stuff, but it's like the Twin Towers came down and it was replaced by Cepheus, you know, a, a building that incorporates the, the shape of Cepheus. So it's like the Stargate was breached and Godhood was, re you know, Godhood was attained, basically. So I've you know, so always we are had now, this, We are now gods. Yeah. I've always had this theory that there, we're in this uh, moment of awakening like, and not in a Q sense, but like all these players are being exposed for what kind of frauds they are. Uh, the, their games are being exposed. For me, um, I think there was also ritual sacrifice on 9-11. We've had guests come on talking about that. And I think they tried to usher in some dark, dark energies to try to counter the 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 awakening that was coming do you have any thoughts on that i think the awakening was a reaction to the you know to the darkness because like i said i i get really impatient with like oh you know these people are like gods and even when we react to it they have you know they plan for that and then they plan for this and it's like you know it's like oh i didn't i didn't drop that casserole dish you know i meant to do that you know for whatever bizarre reason it's just like I, I don't think they can anticipate this. I do think that there's like almost like an Hegelian dialectic that's constantly going on where, you know, uh, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, you know, it's just constant Hegelian dialectic. 
at work, but I, I think that, the, you know, you can't plan for everything. And these people are not superhuman. I mean, just, you know, look at them. Look at what they look like now. They're not, they're not transhuman. They haven't reached immortality. They haven't found a way to not look like a tuna sandwich that was left out in the sun. Did overnight. you see Madonna at the VMAs? Uh, yes. Oh my God. We got to do an intervention. Can you look that up? We got, you remember when we had Alex on? She's like, she's beautiful. I'm like, no, she's trying to run. Oh, that was him. Stuff. That's right. Yeah. Somebody was bringing that up to me and I couldn't remember what it was. That was out. She's, it's, I, I find her unbelievably tragic. You know, it's well, kind of like, like Norma Desmond times a thousand, you know? Well, you know, it goes back to my theory on like Howard Stern and what, how, what she represented. Oh, her daughter's a smoke shell, you know? Uh, but yeah, she's just hurting right now. But, you know, it's like all this stuff that Madonna did. She looks over- like Cher. I guess yeah, she, she meant to. Look like Cher. Yeah, I mean, that's just the look right now. I mean, it's all templates, right? And Megan Fox, like, what's up with that look, man? She looks like something from RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, oh there God. It is. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, why'd you do that to me? <laughs> oh, I'm going to wash my eyes out now. What has she done to her? Look at, look at her breasts. Uh, it, they look like uh, like sort of pale pumpkins. I mean, they look like, like what the you skin wear is stretched and ugh. when for Halloween, you go as a woman and you put in fake boobs. That's what that looks like. Oh, and those duck lips. I mean, that's just a harsh, uh, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for her. I really do. I'm sorry. I know, you know, she's a horrible person and everything like that, but it's just like, that's just like, you, that's she, your, she's your grandmother coming. I mean, you know, it's a grandmother coming out dressed like, you know, she's yeah. 22 years old. And it's just like, listen, man, nothing lasts forever. It's just like you had a, sh- a run, man. There's she doesn't a- want to let go of it. She- same thing with Howard Stern. It's like, you know, that famous drug. And it's like they need that fix, you know. I mean, I really truly believe when Stern says this shit like, oh, you know, they should all be killed or whatever, you know, fuck your freedom. I, I-, I think there's a lot of calculation there. It's like he realized that nobody gives a shit about Howard Stern. Nobody's going to write about him unless he says something stupid. I, I think that it is real, too. I have friends of mine who say outrageous things to you know get traction and they love it but i tell you man edge lords dude they always end up falling in if you're saying stuff to get edgy it, it, you, you you're icarus you fly too close to the sun and you get burnt and i've seen it happen a thousand times man and it just it catches up with you and that's what all these guys are doing but you know the the, the star maps and everything you're doing i 100 percent believe it man all this stuff is calculated. All this stuff is Freemasonry. I mean, you look at like Washington, D.C., it looks like an owl. I mean, it's all there, dude. It's all there. It is like a haunted house. And these actors create this theater that plays around us. And we are the exhibits. And they're eliciting a response from us, which it's is sorcery. You know, sorcery, dude. I'll tell you, you know, so back in the 90s, um, Richard Hoagland had the Enterprise mission and he did. I, I don't know if it was him or somebody who was working for him, but, you know, they would look at every like NASA launch. Right. And they're always sort of timed to like certain points when um, Sirius would be like 33 degrees against the horizon or, you know, above it or below it. Right. So it was always time to, you know, these very specific you know, alignments with Sirius that all had to do with Masonic numerology and stuff. And that's, you know, that was sort of like, cause I used to believe in the space program and everything. I used to think the space program was real, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But then like I worked for like 15 years, like doing all this work for Marvel and stuff and like for all the stuff for the movies and everything. And it really trained my eye. Like I had to look at images like for four days in a row, just like, and I, I really got to like the point where I could tell like what is a fake what's Photoshop and what isn't right. You know, what's, what's stage. And I could tell like distance. I mean, I could really, I really trained my eye to just look at things in a way that I had never done so before. And now when I look at that now stuff, I'm just like, it's a sound stage. Why do you never see further than a thousand feet in any direction? You know what I mean? It's just like, why, why don't you see like hills and, and valleys? You know, why, why didn't the astronauts go up on like some cliff and like, oh my God, look at the beautiful vista. Look at the sun rising over the, the, the horizon of the moon. You know, look at all these, you know, valleys and all this kind of stuff. 
look at that crater. You, know, you never see a crater. You never see any of that stuff. And it's just like, it's, it's so claustrophobic to look at that stuff with me now. And then you look at the, like the, the, the lem quote unquote, and it's got like duct tape and you know, cardboard. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. But I used, listen, I used to is... believe that stuff too. I used to, I believe that was all totally real. And it's just like, now you just realize, you know, Jeff Bezos had 20 years and all the money in the world. And he basically went up 40 miles in the air and came down. It was just like an amusement park ride. Well, you know, what's so interesting. It's like, you talk about, you know, uh, these billionaires, this race to space. You're like, why are we racing to space if we supposedly already been there? Oh, we're going to do it with... Uh, 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 you know, like civilians, was it matter if they're trained or not, if they're going into space? Why? Why it's, wouldn't it's, you use the rich. exact same technology? Yeah, what other technology do you in? know that has regressed like that, where we were at the moon and now we're we're struggling it, just, it, just, just just to get 40 miles up yeah, in the air just to touch it? Oh, yeah, I, I come on. And but see, the, the giveaway is when you look at the dates and you look at like what like that. Blue Origin rocket. Everybody goes, that looks like a giant dick or a giant vibrator. It's like a giant sex toy. And it's like, yeah, well, the reason is, is that all these rocket launches are really just ritual ejaculations. It's all, <laughs> seriously, it is. It's, you know. Just and, blue chew it, experiments. It's all, <laughs> well, you know what the, so, so here's the funny thing. And this is another thing I pointed out with the stars. So um, you had uh, Richard Branson, who's a whole other story you know branson and uh nexium he was involved in that whole story i mean he's a you know forget forget that guy but um he had his little space plane quote unquote but if you look at it it looks like a diagram you know very stylized diagram of like the uterus and the fallopian tubes and then the vaginal opening right and then two weeks after he launches that uh bezos launches launches his giant dick right and that's New Shepherd and Virgin. Well, New Shepherd and Virgin are Virgo, and right above it is Boötes, which is the New Shepherd. So it's just like <coughs> it's all it's all ritualism. It's all sorcery. And this is like when I was dragged kicking and screaming to this realization that it's it's, it's the world is run by people who are basically sorcerers, and that all the technology <coughs> exists solely to serve those goals. I agree with all this dude i totally agree with all this and that they are small and we are large and that's why they got pulled false flags to elicit a response from us they can't do without our consent they can't move forward and you know i mean in europe you're seeing these people like pushing back on these vaccine passports and now uk is like we're, we're abandoning it and the only reason i hate there are marches in new york too well, that just started. The problem is, is that the rest of the country, if you travel to the country, doesn't care anymore. They're not playing pandemic anymore. It is L.A. is the worst of it. New York is like in theater. And it's my whole theory. Like, so I didn't go to the Raiders game because I was making a political statement. Boy, was I an idiot. OK, I should have gone, should have brought you to brought my dad and one saw a great game because what I'm being told now is they didn't even check passports. So why did I, they didn't even check for vaccines? So why did they put that out? It's loose stealing. It's all loose stealing. And I was talking to Eleanor Kerrigan today. She's like, they're never going to do that, man. They need to fill that stadium up. They paid a lot of money for it. They got to make their money back. And she's totally 100% right. But why is that out there? Why are they saying that? Well, that's not good for business because that's part of the ritual. So, and now you got, now you got the Buffalo Bills doing it when they're struggling to get a new stadium. It makes no sense, but I guarantee you they're never going to check for it. They did it at the Staples Center. So why is the middle of America in the South and not playing pandemic anymore, but LA just announces it's going to crack down on indoor everything. Why? Because LA is is Babylon. Yes, I mean, it really is. I mean, I, I was in LA a couple of years ago for you know 
for not great reasons, right? Um, I'll, I, won't go I don't into even that. know what that means. Uh, but no, I, I was that? like some, I, I was, it was some legal stuff. So, you know, but I was going around, um, like I was in Century City and then uh, I was somewhere else, I forget. But, um, you know, so we're driving around and it, the weirdest thing, we're, we're coming up from Orange County and like once you cross the Los Angeles River, it, the traffic stops. You know, we're driving like real great and you know, coming up, what is that, the 405, you know, from Orange County and like, and all of a sudden, like, it's a parking lot. I, I don't understand. Like, once we cross the river, maybe you could tell me that, you guys, LA guys, I don't understand how that works. But, you know, it's just like coming, uh, you know, I went to Santa Monica and like, you come off the freeway and it's just lined with tents and just all up and down the street. And, um, but I don't well, know. How about it's, this? How about but, this? How about like, uh, road construction at the height of traffic, but at night there's no road construction when nobody's on the road. But yet they're got you down to two lanes on a, a, a ten lane highway, so you got to spend forever and you're just going nuts. Well, oh. you know it's funny you should mention that because you asked him about Howard Stern, and one of the things that Howard Stern did is um, he was going to run for governor, and then he got this guy George Pataki, and he and he you know this Republican guy, and had him on a show and everything, and his his one plank in his platform was um do the construction at night so in new jersey and new york they do all that kind of construction at night i don't know why they don't do it in los angeles do you want to but, piss off sam the fucking airport it's like they do it on purpose that place is always fucking packed and it's like right before it's like they don't want you to fly it's like they don't want you to fly get the fuck out of here you're not gonna make it. i don't know see los angeles is like you know, it reminds me of like uh, cancer, you know what I mean? So it's like cancer is like it consumes the cells and it grows like bad cells. And it's just like it's happening all over the place. And I just really feel like when I, I mean, and I was in, like I said, I was in Santa Monica and I'm in Century City. So like I'm in like the creme de la creme. And I just felt like this overwhelming sense of evil everywhere. And just like even just the attitudes of people, you can just kind of feel it like. Well, I it's like a nastiness, but th then you realize that like, oh, shit, oh, this is, that's right, because there's all this underground Satanism that's really big out here, particularly with yeah. all these people trying to get into the movie business. It's like Satanism is the new Scientology almost, you know? Well, so, I, have a feeling, I have a feeling that Texas is actually passing all those laws to get everybody who thinks like people from California get the fuck out of there or don't want to go <laughs> Probably. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, I, I really feel like um, so I was talking. I don't know if you, you've had Gordon White on your show. I was talking to Gordon last night. We were talking about the Met Gala. And I said, you know, I was saying, like, I just felt like this, like these just these are just soulless vessel demons just walking around with these dead eyes. You know, you, go look at some of those photographs and like nobody is smiling. Nobody's happy. You know, these are people like paying 50, 30, 50 thousand dollars a ticket or whatever to go into this stupid thing. Nobody's happy. Nobody's smiling. Nobody looks like they're having a good time. And everybody has these like dark, dead eyes. And I said, you know what this is the, the end result of? This is the end result of like the fashion industry um, incorporating all this occult and satanic symbolism for the past at least 15 years. You know, because like Vigilant Citizen, you guys know Vigilant Citizen, right? I mean, that guy, those guys got rich doing that. But it all came from this guy in, in London who I knew, this guy named Benjamin Singleton. He had a, a blog called Pseudo Occult Media. And he started tracking all this stuff with the fashion back in like, you know, mid, late 2000s. And it's like what we see now with all these dead eyed, soulless looking people and all this like very it's it's almost like a feeling of confrontation, you know, that you see with and just all these weird. Uh, I mean, like all this shit, it's just like look at I mean, it's like you're trying to hard. I mean, like the girl at the MTV Video Awards with a chair. Is on that, wait, is that Rihanna? Is that Rihanna? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, Rihanna is like she's so beautiful. I mean, totally. I, I really think she's like one of the most beautiful women in pop. Kim Kardashian. So What's that? Kim What's Kardashian. That? All dressed in black. Oh, was that the one who was wearing like the black hood and everything like that? Yeah. Like, but I mean, look at all these people. Like, look at their faces. That they just they always seem like. Not happy. Have you ever seen one that looks happy? That's what I never. I, though that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Happy. It's like nobody's smiling. Nobody's yeah. happy. Every and and they're all wearing all this like weird kind of occultically tinged stuff. And but it's like even so. Let's just say so. Let's what just say go over, go over, dude, go over, dude. 
Go right or left? More. No, go to the go to the left, the left, the other way, whatever the other way is. Down, go down. Go down, keep going down. Keep going. What is that? That looks this like right pancakes. Here? No, the other one right there. Oh, like, oh sorry. Uh, next to it. Dress train, yeah. It looks like a fucking pan. Like you went out as a pancake? What the fuck is that? So much space. What are you doing? Like you almost forgot to That's like Vienna. make the pizza. It's so <laughs> awful. <laughs> Yeah. And it's just like it's it looks so... like yeah it looks like dough that's been left out for a while and it starts to get like a little crusty you know what i mean it's just like i don't know man i, I don't know hold on. This is this is this guy go down where it says fake me to gala seating right that that like that gay dude that gay dude got busted for pedophilia on youtube and here he is at this thing it's it's like and you that's probably why you got invited YouTube has a pedophile problem, obviously. I mean, all of Je- and we've had Jeffree Star on my naughty show before. I met him. I he was a nice guy. Uh wait, is that guy James St. James? That when you were talking about the one who was was that him? Like it's him, and then this was that James. Look up James hey. St. James. And uh no, nope, that's not him. No. Oh, that guy definitely diddles kids there's no way he does it there's no i, uh, I dude, no, feel but... that by there's no way that guy there's no way that dude has sex with people his own look, look, look at this kind of stuff too it's just like look at the it's, picture it's, it's also it's like this it's an anti-human you know that's the thing that like really bothers me about this stuff is that it's such an atmosphere of like anti-humanity yeah. well it's here's like my anti- biggest problem with and... like we live in this society in entertainment where they're like Punch up, punch down, right? Punch up, punch down. And yet all these guys have the vibe of dudes who are into kids. And, and particularly these comedians who do a lot of pedophile jokes. And it's just like, I don't know anything that is more punching down than kiddie porn. Right? It's like those kids have no say in what's going on in their life. They have been abused by adults. And these guys do all these jokes about it. Like they're all funny people. Oh wait, look go back how, to that. Look at look at this girl right here. I she mean, she looks miserable. The other girl's a great. But she actress. look at her eyes. Look at her. Oh, I love yeah. her. Um, but uh, look at her eyes. Like zoom in on those yeah. eyes. It's like what is? They just like they're dead. She looks like a corpse almost. What is so sad is like, like you just watch these people to be a main character in Hollywood. You have to play the game, uh, of course, be- yeah. because there's so many green lights you have to get to get anything. And all it takes is one person up the chain to be like, fuck this noise. And you don't get it. Now on the fringe players, you could probably do it. But in the main characters where you make all the real money, you get all the real fame. I do like how she's slightly cross-eyed. I have to be honest with you. That is yeah, but, kind but, of a look for me. Look at that, but look at her, look at her expression. Yeah. What is that? I mean, man? It's just like, it's just blank. You know, it's like nothing there. Soulless vessel. This, this, the lights aren't on, man. You know, nobody's home. It's really a, it's, I find it really disturbing. I really do. Because yeah, being aware, like I said, of how the fashion industry has been seeding all this occultic and satanic and just like anti human, anti life, anti nature kind of symbolism for so long now. I and mean, this is, this is the end result. You know, these, these people, these pretty young things who should be on top of the world and they all look like zombies. Well, look at the product of uh, Britney Spears. She went crazy. That oh, one, I think they went too crazy on her. They gave her too much MK Ultra, and she just blew a fuse, shaved her I head. Mean, and like, away. what is this? Could you ever imagine dressing in anything like that <laughs> to go anywhere? You mean your prom day didn't dress like this? Uh, I mean, like, what is that? Like, look at her face. Look at her face. Like, is that looks like a mannequin? Is that a recognizably human expression no. in any way, shape, or form? That looks like a mannequin to me. It really does. And it's like half these people do. It's like, what is going on? Why are they all so just, there's no affect there. There's no soul. And uh, don't even get me started on this guy. <laughs> Harry yeah, Styles. this guy. It's just like so ridiculous. And you know, I, I love David Bowie, but damn, if, if, if he's not uh, at least uh, one of the seminal figures in this whole movement of, you know, well, dressing. David Bowie was so into the occult. Yeah, but but then I mean, again, David Bowie stopped doing that. I mean, David Bowie did, did that for yeah. a few years, and then like in 1975, he was wearing like three piece suits on stage. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah, you know, no, what I mean? he just did that stuff because 
It was I, I know my time. well. It isn't even that. I know my Bowie. There are two things. Like he got married to Angie Bowie, who was you know she was really into that stuff. But it was also he couldn't get any attention any other way. I mean, he had no career until what he started. What is that with her head on her that, yeah, those so. five eyes things? What is that? It's Jared Leto carrying around his own head. Oh, oh my God, he loves himself that much. What a weirdo! There's something weird about that uh, that guy. I don't know. Which I, way? It's funny because the 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 head actually has more expression than the the actual Jared Leto. That's so. I don't get. And it. he's got that Jared. cult now in an island. And oh, dude, yeah, that he's got a real cult, man. I yeah, know somebody who used to work for him. Like sixes, right? I know somebody who used to work for him, dude. And and he run he he owns that big, you know, that big ass military looking complex in the hills. Sam, yeah. you know, that kind of that's yeah. Jared Leto's compound. Yeah. And he, he runs so now it he's like Osho. a military installation. Yeah, uh, he, he, that was his Go up to that work. woman with the five, the nine uh, eyes on her fucking Hold head. Hold on, it's not letting me click on that for some reason. That's weird. Well, you know what that actually is? That's um facial recognition hacking. Oh, that's so funny. She's okay. really I, I, I don't think that's I don't why know she's where she went. Look, go, scroll down again, Johnny. You just passed that woman with a pink hair. Just scroll down, not up. Um, keep going. Oh, Megan Fox. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, keep going down, going down one more. Okay. This is Nikita dragon. Like wh what yeah, is that? Oh, yes, there? Yes, what yes. is that? Look like what? Like those, this is the thing that disturbs me. It's like, so oh, like, that's I, like, look, that guy's there. It's the same. I dude. think that's the same person. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think they're the same person. Are but you they're sure, in, dude? Yeah, it is. Well, look at Jeff. I think it is brother. Hold on. You think the key to dragon and that <laughs> maybe chick? Not. And... Maybe not. Hold on. Let me, let me look that. Let's look this up. But she looks. I just found out about the key to dragon too. What the fuck? I mean, oh, no, this friends. must be her like buddy or something here. Okay. Yeah. They do all this stupid ass makeup shit. And that guy was cruising for fucking James Charles. That must've been who you were talking about. Oh no, 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 no. It says like, Nikita, Nikita dragon, dragon used to be a guy too. Yeah. Nikita dragon yeah. tried to clear James Charles name with screenshots. But Nikita dragon was a dude. It's that, it's that Asian boy on the little left, the little Asian dude. Okay, guys. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You um, like trans. No. Yeah. Well, besides that, um, the okay. so that work here. The word. So, there's an interesting thing where um, in the Bible, when you see the word sodomite, it really means um, Kadesh. And Kadesh were actually, um, it, Kadesh means holy. So Kadesh were actually temple prostitutes. They were transgender tr uh, temple prostitutes. But in the New Testament, when um, St. Paul uses the term uh, malakoi, it's a Greek term that's the equivalent of Kadesh, um, but it's also very similar to Malachi, which is the Hebrew term for angel. So the Hebrew term for angel and the Greek word for uh, transgendered temple prostitute are almost identical. Interesting. So are you saying that they're angels? <laughs> well, uh, the let me, let me, well, let me just tell you something else. One <laughs> they're thing doing the Lord's that, work. One thing that I've been doing, I've done for a number of years now on the, um, on the blog is that I go back and I look at all the, the, ancient art like medieval and byzantine and all this kind of art the angels always look like women and a matter of fact the byzantines when they depict angels you know the eastern orthodox church they would be wearing um like the very specific hairstyles and clothes of like yeah i mean here it is that they're these hairs that's a woman's hairstyle from from byzantium and they're all like depicted as very very feminine so you're not saying back in the day churches had trans hookers I, I, listen this is but look at that i mean look at that <laughs> the angels are all male right particularly the archangels right they look, yeah. tall. They look tall damn dude it gets deeper and deeper it, it never stops man it, the, the, it just gets deeper and deeper but those specific hairstyles those are the hairstyles of like a high born byzantine woman like wife i mean come so on you're telling that. me that sodomite was a term for trans hooker church trans hookers no temple so there would be like there's particular goddesses that were sort of like they're like aphrodite asherah atagardis um what's her name ishtar so they're all basically the same goddess right it's like the goddess of love and war and the the temples would have you know they'd also be brothels 
but the brothels. Hold on, the temples. Are you talking Hebrew temples? No, I'm talking the temples of like um, religion. These these goddesses, like Atagardis, Asherah, uh-huh. um, okay. Ishtar. You know, so this is family of goddesses, Venus particularly. So these temples would all have brothels. But the brothels were all cross-dressers. So for some reason, the, 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 this weird coincidence where the word for angel and the word for, word for transgendered prostitute both are the same. Which is what the, again? So, so the, the, the Hebrew word is Kadesh, right? Kedesh. And Kadesh means, Kadesh means holy. But that was also the Kadeshim who were the, again, like the transgendered prostitutes in these temples. But in the New Testament... It's Malakoi. The, in, the, in the Greek, you know, St. Paul wrote in the Greek, it's Malakoi, but that's almost the same word as Malachi, which is the, the Hebrew word for angel. So it's like there's something just weird going on there that I haven't been able to figure out. But so there's this whole, there's this whole theory um, that these, this transgenderism is all to create vessels for uh, the, the, the watchers who were the rebel angels, the 200 rebel angels from the book of Enoch. I mean, this stuff is getting really deep and we're, we're going really off script here, but love it. there's this whole, I'm all about off script, man. That so this stuff is, is weird, dude. So, I mean, I've no, I, I still haven't been able to nail this down, but it's just, it's really weird when you look at all these depictions of angels in all this church art and they're either actual women or they're like really feminine looking men. But like, you know, I mean, like there, <laughs> it's like, come on. I mean, look this is what this. happens when you start drawing and then you realize you're running out of space so for legs. And yeah. look at this. <laughs> but I mean, look at this one right here. That's I mean, that's, so that's, funny. These are, these are all archangels and, and they're all dressed, you know. Like women. They're all like wearing women. dresses. Oh, there's no manly ones. I didn't think about that. That is kind of crazy, dude. And, 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 and I couldn't really find, so I couldn't really find any like really, overtly masculine depictions of angels until like the 17th, 18th, 19th century, maybe even like 18th, 19th century, maybe even mostly the 19th century. And it's real late. It's so real we, late. We basically, the seeing... angels are trannies. Non-gendered, at least. Well, I mean, they're not supposed to be gendered, right? I mean, they're supposed to have be sexless, but... Um... They're Thai lady boys, man. No pronouns. But, they the, have their but, but, but see, this also connects to Freemasonry, too, because this whole idea of um, in Freemasonry with uh, coming from alchemy, which is the rebus, which is the conjoining. So this is whole idea that that, you know, we, we read in Plato and we also read in, in um, sort of non standard Judaism that that God was both male and female. And this goes back to the Egyptians with Atum, but created Adam as male and female and that they were separate. So when the, the ribs were removed to create Eve in the garden of Eden, that, that was like the separation of the sexes. Or and, they uh, were trying to be Marilyn Manson so they could suck their own dicks. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. That's actually in the Bible. <laughs> so, um, so, so there's this whole, there's this whole lore in a lot of ex- esoteric thinking of like the hermaphrodite, the sacred androgen. And I'll t- I, I tell people this all the time. They get mad at me. It's like, listen, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about the sacred feminine. Okay. The sacred feminine doesn't mean like what the feminists think it means. The sacred feminine means this conjoining, this rejoining of the masculine and feminine, the androgyne. That's what the sacred feminine actually is. So, oh my go. God, that's some uh, deep shit. We have to have you come on and talk about that. You, you know, here's the, you know the thing I always say is that like everything I talk about, it's like it's all hiding in plain sight. You know, it's just nobody thinks to put it together. But the reason I'm talking about a lot of stuff, you know, for instance, the star maps is like you know again we see this with nine. The, what's the defining event of our lifetimes? It's nine eleven, right? So, for some reason, nine eleven is a star map. You know, I, I, I hesitate to speculate by who or why, but there you, there you have it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's worth studying all stuff. You know, for instance, the whole transgender movement, that the transgender movement is nothing new. It all ties back to ancient religion. It all ties back. Oh, here's another great thing. So the, the Met Gala, right? Everybody's talking about the Met Gala. The, the word gala comes from the Sumerian, right? And the Akkadian version of this is, is Kalu. 
But gala is the conjoining, it, it means anus and penis. That's what gala actually means in the ancient Sumerian. So when you see the Met Gala, there's like a double meaning there. I mean, we have this whole idea that gala is like a festival or something, or it's a big celebration. But the term itself goes back to Sumerian and means, again, like these transgendered priests. It's, it's, there's a lot of different terms for these things. It really makes me wonder. Like, Dude, it is crazy, man. And it just adds to like this theory that they're just trying to piss us off about a bunch of shit. And no, 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 no. See, that, that's, see this, is, this is thinking that, that I, I don't really go for because I think it really what it is is they're, they're trying to practice their religion and the religion goes back five, 6,000 years and we're just in the way. This is their religion. It's okay. their religion. I mean, it, it's, it's, okay. it's a, no, I'm, I'm not just the trans stuff, but the trans stuff is a big part of it. So it's like, I've, I've studied like the whole history of MK Ultra and stuff. And I really believe now that the MK, which nobody can seem to figure out what that actually means. Everybody goes, oh, it's a CI de designation and everything. But I know how MK Ultra started. It started when Alan Dulles was hanging out with Carl Jung. And Carl Jung was really, I mean, he was kind of crazy at the time. And he was really into mit Mithraism, right? And that's a whole other thing with it. Like, at the end of this, you see that the Statue of Liberty is a man. It's, it's Mithras in, in the second degree of the Mithraic Mysteries, which is uh, called the Bride of Venus. But anyway, so I think MKN, MK Ultra means Mithras Kybel. And Mithras is this god that we see all over the place. Um, for instance, Michael Bloomberg has a Mithraic temple in his world headquarters now. Like, like why wouldn't he, right? Um, this the Statue of Liberty is, is clearly based on ancient depictions of Mithras. Uh, this is the eleven pointed star that he stands upon. Um, I it's just I don't even know what to say anymore. But I really think that Mithras MK Ultra is Mithras Kybel because because Kybel was the goddess who had the um, transgendered priests. Like all the priests of Kybel were transgendered, and they were called the Galloi, which is you know, basically the same word as gala or Kalu. They're called the Galloi or the Galloi. You bring up the priest being transgender. Does that have it to do anything with the Catholic Church and all the little boys since that's so common? <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. What, what, what am I going to say? I mean. Well, no, that's why I had to bring it up because, I mean, it's so common in the church and they make it seem it's just like oh it's just here and there it's more than just here and there it's more than one guy my mom always is like oh it's just that one priest no it's a lot more common than you think and i'm but wondering it isn't, it isn't just a catholic church though i mean in orthodox judaism it's it's endemic you know uh, in in a lot of like sort of any kind of cultic setup any kind of cultic situation 100 percent in the middle eastern countries where islam is the giant religion there's tons of man boy loving going Bakabazi on. in in Afghanistan. So it's across uh, all religions, dude. Yeah. So I mean, listen, this is the world we live in, you know? So when you we talk about like, oh, they're just doing this to piss us off, I, I, I disagree. I mean, they're doing a lot of vaccine passports and all this kind of shit to piss us off. But when you see all the symbolism and stuff, one thing I always say is that people will lie with words all the time. People are very hesitant to lie with symbols. I mean, think about it. You could say, oh, uh, just, you know, I, I ran like the, the Iron Man decathlon and I won. You would say that, like, <laughs> not you, but like anybody would just say that, right? But would they have that tattooed on their arm? They'd be a little more hesitant to like create like something, like a permanent symbolism of something that's a lie. And, and this is something that I've noticed throughout all my studies is that people will lie all the time with words, but they're very, very hesitant to lie with symbols, it's like there's almost two different rules for the two forms of communication. It's so interesting, dude. It's so deep and it's like, it's so layered and it's also purposeful. And when you realize it, you can just step away from it, man. And just well, like, yeah, well, that's, just the, that's not let it suck your loosh. Well, that's the, see, that's the thing I always say. It's like, what's the point of knowing all this stuff? The point mm -hmm. of knowing all this stuff is so you don't get caught up in all this bullshit that you see in the media that wants you to get angry all the time, wants you to get angry all the time about all these 
Punch and Judy, pro wrestling, Roddy Roddy Piper bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're constantly being, your energy is just constantly being vampirized by people who just want you to draw into the, their fake dramas. And it really, so much of it is ritual drama. So when I look at ritual drama and I say, don't get caught up in this. Don't let yourself be suckered by this. This is just, just pro wrestling. You know what I mean? It's just don't like this recall. That was, I mean, you remember how, oh, oh, oh Gavin Newsom's going to lose every. And then, and then the last day right before it, they were like, it's not even going to be close. The Democrats got this thing in the back because they had no interest anymore in ginning up all this controversy. And, and as you say, you know, vamp vampirizing your energy. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the angle is there, but like I'm sort of at a point in my life where I don't even like try to figure out the angles anymore because I think a lot of this stuff, these people, a lot of these people have just gone insane and I don't even think they know what the angles are. So when they start running all these ops, they don't even know what their goal is. They don't even know why they're running it. They don't even know what they're after anymore. They're just like so caught up in the drama of it. You know, one thing I say is like there's so many ops being run. It's like, how do these people keep them all straight? You know, it's kind of like when you see in Syria where like this militia is controlled by the Pentagon and this militia is controlled by the CIA and they end up fighting each other. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just like, you, you just, oh no, we're cops arrest cops who are exactly. undercover. It's like, yeah. dude, we're undercover. It's like, punch oh, that. You blew this, dude. Well, you're an idiot and you're going to jail. All right. I see that movie. Yeah. Thank you, see you that movie, so yeah. much, dude. I, uh, end of shift. No, what's it called? End of the Jake end Gyllenhaal shift. movie. Yeah, that's yeah that with the with uh, the a Hispanic guy, right? And I, I can't remember his name, but it's yeah, about, it's two cops, right? And and it ends horribly for them. Yeah, they, because yeah. they they do exactly what you're talking about. We're like Buster. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interject. No, that's a, dude, that's a pretty good film. But watch that film because that to me that film to me is like it's very symbolic of like things that are really going on right now. You know, it's like a microcosmic version of that. And I'll just say that. And I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, no, no. Michael my, Pena final the other question to really... you, my final question to you is how much of this is purposeful and how much of it is it just didn't work out the way they wanted it to? Like I said, I don't, I don't think these people are as smart as everyone else does. That's what I, Brian I, Callen says all the time. And I'm like. Well, I mean, it just seems like all these like nine elevens and all this stuff where they're like, well, we did, we got away from us. I'm like, well, you got a lot of money and you got a lot of power from. So, well, I, I don't know about stuff like that, but you know, when you're asking like just in general, I mean, you can intend something, you can plan something, you can do something, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's like what Michael Tyson said. It's like, you know, Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, right? You know, it, on the battlefield, the, the opposing side gets a vote, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I, I'm just always so hesitant not to ascribe intent, but to ascribe, like, when they fuck up and things go, you know, sideways on them to say, oh, well, they plan that too, because I don't, I don't, you know... That to me is very disempowering. That's a psych out, you know, and, and avoiding the psych outs, I think, is another important part of, of looking into this kind of symbolism. You know? End of watch was that film, by the way. End, End of, of watch. watch. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Christopher, if they wanted to find you, where could they find you again? Uh, Secretson.blogspot.com. I've been right, there um, for uh, 17 years now. If you could just uh, send me any links you want me to include in the in the um description we'll love to do that as always you never you never let us down you always are have the most interesting stuff to talk about even when i'm like i don't know what he's saying and then bam it all comes i'm like holy shit there it is and uh definitely happened today that with the designs and uh and spiritual trans hookers. Who knew? Who knew, bro? <laughs> so much information. Christopher Knowles always taking a shot at the Mount Rushmore. One of the best to do it. And uh, we appreciate you, brother. Uh, you are my favorite Nephilim in the world. Uh, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. We'll do it soon. Guys, we're going to be in Huntington Beach. We're going to be in Kansas City. And Omaha, Nebraska, grab your tickets while you can. Go to samtriple.com again, and we will see you soon. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Johnny. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. We, 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 we go deep, homeboy. <laughs>
This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hat, Tim foil hat.